Okay, hello. Welcome back. It is October 27th. Kind of hard to believe. It's that late in the month, but yep. Welcome back. We're going to do some critical reasoning. In particular, we're going to do some strengthening and weakening stuff. We're going to discuss that general type problem along the way. We just finished the whole rules, easy stuff. And then we, um, here's the copyright down the screen again. These are all from the free GMAC prep software. This is copyright GMAC. And let's put a problem on the board. Let's do it. How about, about this one? Don't forget where you find the answers to multiple choice questions, ladies and gentlemen. Please do not answer the question in the chat box. Give you a little bit of time to answer that one. Thank you. 
Okay, we still have a lot of people not answering the question. So, at this point, it's probably unlikely that you're making progress. So, you should probably pick something. Also, don't forget how time management works on this test. Um, time management is basically just are you stuck or are you not stuck? And if you're stuck, you quit. Um, we've talked about time management in previous classes of this, in previous editions of this workshop, but you know, time management is not this elaborate thing about minutes and seconds. I mean, time management is really just like identifying honestly when you are making progress and when you are not. But, okay, so let's talk about it. Um, we, we've had a bunch of workshops before about strengthening and weakening and critical reasoning and stuff like that. And we've, we've talked about the basic deal behind these things. So, I mean, a sh short, short rundown of that. When you do these problems, Problems. I mean, a couple of the important steps, and this is this is elaborated a little bit more in some of these earlier sessions in the archive. But in in strengthening weakening problems, a couple of the key elements are you have to clarify the argument. Um, it's important to translate terms like argument and weaken into specifics. Uh, like, this is one of the biggest issues that people have is, like, you don't want to think about words like weaken the argument. Like, you actually want to translate those into specifics. Um, you know, because when people have conversations about stuff, pe people don't have conversations in terms of like how would you weaken this argument? Right? People talk about things that are things. People talk about specifics. So you know, that's an important thing to do right off the top. And then also don't forget that um, the things that strengthen the, or weaken the argument are going to be connected by they're not going to be rigorously connected by formal logic. So, strengthen or things that do strengthen or weaken the argument are not connected by formal logic. They're connected by basically real world thinking and common sense. So, keep that in mind. It's not going to be rigorous logic. You're not going to be able to prove the argument. So make sure that you are not trying to like rigorously prove things, which it seems like too often people are trying to do. Um, okay. So we want to read this part first. Um, if you have a question, you should just type it in the chat box. Not, not use the raising hand button. Okay. Um, we read this part first. Which of the following of two provides the evidence that the two developments were causally related? Like, what, what, are, what are we trying to? This is a problem. Which problem is this? This is a problem from the GNET prep software. Those, those problems don't have numbers. So, I, I don't. I don't know if they have identifiers of, of whatever type. I'm not actually sure, but they don't have like the, this problem might be problem one on someone's test and problem thirty-eight on someone else's test. We don't know. Um, what are we trying to correlate here? Okay, we have two discoveries, so two developments. So this is the part that you read first. 
notice you read this before you read the passage, right? So you read this first. So we, we want to show cause and effect between two things. So now we have to find those two things. Like what are the two things we want to show cause and effect for? So then we go to the passage and figure that out, right? So, okay. So there's a bunch of yeast, blah, blah, blah. Many centuries during which the Egyptians made unleavened bread. Basically, they might have made leavened bread by accident. But they didn't do it on purpose until this time. So one of these things, one of these discoveries or developments was leavened bread. And I mean, even if you don't know what leavened means, it, it's still okay. I mean, one, the one thing about this test that's kind of neat and that is very consistent, by the way, is that you don't really have to know vocabulary words to take this exam. It's not like the GRE. The, the GRE is very vocabulary based. This exam is very not vocabulary based. I mean, you, you really don't have to know a lot of the fancy words to take this test. So just, just keep that in mind. Um, okay. So one of the developments is leavened bread, whatever that even means. You don't even have to know. That roughly coincided with a variety of wheat that was preferable to other varieties because you could remove the kernel without toasting the grain. So a type of wheat whose kernel could be removed before you cooked it, basically. And you want to show a relationship between these two things. So now what you should try to do with these things what you should try to do with these things. So we, we want to show, we want more evidence that these are related by cause and effect. Which one's going to be the cause? Yeah, the cause is going to be the new weed, right? I mean, obviously, because a, a type of bread is not going to cause a new type of wheat to exist. Like that, that would be crazy. So this is, if anything is going to be a cause and an effect here, this is going to have to be the cause. And this is going to have to be the effect. So Specifically, we need to show that, because the only thing that's really special about this wheat is the fact that you can take the kernel off of it before you cook. And so that's, the word causally related means that, that one of the two is a cause and the other one is, is the effect. Because if you, the question that's in the chat box, I mean, if you have any two things that happen together, then it's going to be one or the other. It's, they're either going to be each other's cause and effect or there's going to be a third cause. So if you, if you think about the question you're asking, that, that would be, that would be literally everything in the world. So, yeah, I mean, ca causally related is, one of them is the cause and the other one is the effect. 
uh, the question in the box right now is why is the wheat the cause? This is just common sense. I mean, if you try reversing cause and effect here, it's, it, it becomes ridiculous because you can't. I mean, I mean, imagine this as the cause, and imagine this as the effect, and think about that for a second. I mean, if you if you make a, a certain kind of bread, that's not that's not going to bring a new type of wheat into existence. Right, that would make no sense. But but if there's a new type of wheat, then that could very reasonably cause a new type of bread to be possible. So that, that's just common sense. If this is going to work in a cause and effect direction, it's going to have to be that direction. Okay, so what you should do for all of these problems, like for every strengthening, weakening question, before you go to the answer choices, you should always make a standard, make a specific standard for a correct answer before looking at the choices. You should always do that. So here, what we need is this, right? Our, our standard is, I mean, we, we need a reason why this new type of weed would actually allow us to make leavened bread, which, I mean, also what that implies is that the other types of wheat that existed before this must have not allowed us to make leavened bread. So that, that, there's our standard. And before we even look at the choices, there's a standard. Standard for a correct answer. We need a reason why this type of wheat allowed people to make leavened bread and why previous types of wheat or other types of wheat didn't let people make leavened bread. Okay, there's a delay on the sound, so I'm going to wait about 15 seconds here. Okay, I think we're back. Um, all right, this is what we need, right? I mean, we need a reason why removing the kernel before cooking allows us to make leavened bread. So this specific type of, of thing. We need a reason why removing kernel before cooking lets us make leavened bread. And why if you can't remove a kernel, then you can't make leavened bread. Okay. So A has nothing to do with that. B has nothing to do with that. Ah, if you look at C. Yeah. Heating it destroys something that must be present in order to leaven it. So this is the answer that we want. This is perfect, right? What this is saying is that if you because the the only the only thing that's new about this wheat is that you can take off the kernel before you cook it, and what this answer choice is telling us is that if you can't, if you don't take off the kernel, you can't leaven it. So. 
So, you know, the gluten thing is not, I mean, th that, that's the reason why the Levitt bread is impossible, but it, it doesn't matter why that is. I mean, this is the reason, this, this is, I mean, what, whatever the reason is, it's, it's going to be a specific reason, right? Like, the, like the reason why, th th there, has to, there has to be some reason why other varieties of wheat didn't let you make this type of bread. And if you think about it, whatever that reason is, it has to be really specific. So, because the reasons, I mean, all the reasons for stuff like this are always going to be specific. So, I mean, always. So, I mean, not, I mean, not only is that not a problem, but whenever you have any sort of thing like this, where you have to explain some specific reason for something, it's always going to be like that. Hopefully that makes sense. If, if if it doesn't make sense, what you should do is just make up your own examples that are similar. If you, anything like you just did not work until we came up with this version of it, and then like like whenever you have a situation where a new version of something works in some specific way, the reasons for that are incredibly specific. So yeah, making those kinds of analogies that'll help. Um, this one, the people who ate it obviously had nothing to do with anything. And then E just says that it's less work to make flour from this stuff, but E has nothing to do with making leavened bread. So E is also irrelevant. But notice if you make this kind of standard before you go to the choices, it, it's incredibly clear that this choice is correct and that the other four choices are completely irrelevant because none of the other four choices have anything to do with making leaven bread, which is what this argument is all about. So notice, in other words, notice the incredible importance of making a standard before you go to the choices. Cannot be overestimated, guys. Always make a standard before you go to the choices. Number two. I don't know what you mean by number two. Um, the third option. Number choice B still has nothing to do with making leavened bread. So, and there's, and there's no reason to think, there's no reason, there's no indication that toasting kits would affect leavened bread differently from other bread. I mean, remember this entire argument is about this. I mean, even if you don't know what leavened bread means, and I'm sure a lot of people don't. I mean, if you if you are Jewish, you you know what it means because like Jewish people use unleavened bread in, in their holiday celebrations and stuff. But even if you don't know what leavened and unleavened bread are, it doesn't matter because you just have to notice that these are two different kinds of bread. You know, I mean, you can call them bread A and bread B if you want to, but like, like the fact that there is a kind of bread called leavened bread is obviously important here, because it's 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 different. Like, like people people made bread before they could make this leavened bread, so in the passage that's clear. Like they they made bread for a long time that was unleavened whatever leaven means. And then they discovered how to make this stuff later. So that's the point. Yeah, again, you don't even have to know what the words mean, but the entire argument is about this type of bread. And choice B still has nothing to do with this type of bread. And in fact, neither do any of the other choices except for C. So. 
And you'd be surprised, right? Because most people got this problem wrong here. But once you have this standard, I mean, again, it has to be about leaven bread. Once you have this standard, it, it's incredibly clear. I mean, you know, all four of the wrong answers are like, wow, it's got nothing to do with that. It's actually surprising just how wrong the wrong answers are. It's actually astonishing how wrong they are sometimes. Um, the question in the chat box, if you have a standard that doesn't fit any of the choices, then in a worst case scenario, you'll have to guess. Because in that case, that means there's some sort of understanding that needs to be there that isn't there. I mean, if you can, if you can revise your standard or, you know, re, revise your understanding, if that's possible, you should do it. If not, then that's just going to have to be a problem where you guess. But the bigger problem that people have is that they don't make a standard and then they just read the choices and let the choices take them for a ride. That's the real problem. Because, like, B is immediately irrelevant. Like, when you see choice B, you should think, okay, this has nothing to do with leavened bread. So it's gone. But if people don't have a standard like this, then they will reason in the way that was put in the chat box. They'll be like, oh, well, maybe this is a type of distinction that blah, 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 right? I mean, so not only are you wasting your time, but you're, you know, going through all the thought processes that are unnecessary. So just make sure that you don't do that. Make sure you have an understanding of what you need before you go to the choices. I mean, as far, as far as time goes, honestly, you guys should be spending at least 75% of your time before you even look at the choices. Like, looking at the choices should be at most 25% of your time and maybe even less because you should have a standard and checking the choices to see whether they meet that standard should not take that long. If, if you're spending most of the time looking at the choices, that's bad. That means you should spend a lot more time specifying stuff first. Okay. Um, let me see smiley face icon if this all makes sense. Um, as far as how to better understand the argument, well, if there was a short answer to that, and, like if there were a short answer to that and I had it, I would be a very rich man. But just make sure that you have a goal when you're reading the words. Like make sure that you're not just like, la, 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 I'm reading words for no reason. Like, Specifically, make sure that you don't start reading at the top. That would be a mistake. Because if you start reading at the top, you would literally have no idea why you were reading what you were reading. Like, you would be like, I don't know why I'm reading these words. You need, first, you have to read here. And then you're like, okay, I have a goal which is to, I, I need to find two things that are supposed to be related by cause and effect. Then you find those two things, which are this and this. And then like, you just have to have a goal, is the point. You need to have a reason to be reading the words that you're reading. So just, just check yourself on that, at least. Uh, if you have, if you're ever reading words and you honestly don't know why you are reading them, then check yourself. That's, that's the, the short suggestion that I can get. Okay, um, let's move on. Try this one. Don't forget where the multiple choice answers are found. Do not answer in the chat box.
All right. Um, if you don't have an answer, you should pick one, please. Let's take a look. Okay. Okay. Let's let's take a look. So we need we need to translate these words. Basically, I mean, you read the question first, and pretty much when there are words in the question that people would not say out loud in a conversation, you should you should translate them into specifics. So. Okay. What what is the argument? So well I mean, when you do these problems, remember that they're not going to arrange these arguments in ways that are particularly deceptive or disingenuous. Uh, in other words, the, the conclusions of these arguments are usually going to be at the end. And this one is pretty clearly the conclusions at the end, right? Clearly, therefore, blah, 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 blah. So th this is the point. The point, the point is this. One way to reduce highway deaths is to require shippers to increase the use of triple trailer and trucks. So like what they're saying, in other words, is that trucks with three trailers, like triple trailer trucks, are extra safe. They're like they're they're safer than other trucks. Kinds of trucks. I mean, that's, that's what they're saying, right? Like one way to reduce highway deaths is to use more of these trucks. So that's give me a smiley face if that makes sense. Maybe that's the ultimate point of this argument is that those trucks are the safest trucks. Okay. So, well, how are they arguing that? I mean, that. I mean, it's, when you see this, that that, that should kind of look wrong to you. I mean, when you think of trucks that have three trailers behind them, that, that probably doesn't make you think of, like, maximum safety. You know, I mean, in, in, in fact, in, in here in California, those are not even legal. But... You should be like, uh, that seems a little bit weird. But let's see how they're arguing that. Okay. How are they arguing that? Well, big trucks in general are 6% of the miles on the road, but are 12% of highway deaths. But the biggest trucks, the ones with three trailers, have a lower accident rate. Ah. So they're saying, like they say, trucks with three trailers had a lower accident rate. Therefore, these trucks must be safer than other trucks. What do we need? And we, we need a reason. Like th this is a fact. So I mean you, you can't you can't make facts less true. So like this is actually factual. Therefore these trucks must be safer than other trucks. What 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 do we what do we want here? How would you guys summarize standard? Uh, 
for a correct answer. So would you as soon as you type in the chat box. Okay, so say they're not as safe as people think, but you can't just say they're not as safe as people think because there's, you still have this statistic, which is actually a statistic. So, I mean, you, you still have to, you have to do something with that. Because, I mean, don't, don't forget, okay, like, don't forget what these are. Like, these, these arguments are not going to just contradict what they have said. So th there's a couple of things that are important to say about this. Yeah, it's, it's what Catherine said is exactly correct. So we'll get there in a second. Um, but first, let me address this, because this is kind of the problem that people have with these, with these problems sometimes. Like this, this is not what these arguments are going to do. Because first of all, they don't contradict themselves. I mean, like the, the it, if the conclusion says X, you're not going to weaken that conclusion by just saying not X. Like that's, that's not how it's going to work, right? So the, the the conclusion of the argument is these trucks are safer. So the weakener is not going to be actually they're not safer. Okay, make sure you guys give me a smiley face if you understand that. I mean, they're not going to just contradict it. They're going to actually give you a reason that undermines it, but you're going to have to see what the connection is. And then the other the other problem with this is that. Um, the other problem with this is that also what here you you're still leaving that statistic unexplained. I mean, because you still have a statistic that says there's a lower accident rate. for three trailer trucks. So what you need to do is what Catherine says, which is you have to actually explain the statistic in a way that doesn't have to do with triple trailer trucks being safer. Like that, that's, that's what you have to do, exactly. So, because, because we do, we, we have to understand why there is a lower accident rate. Because the lower accident rate is the, the whole point behind why this argument is an argument in the first place. Because we, 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 we do have to understand, yeah. We do need to know why three trailer trucks have fewer accidents. Or fewer deaths. Yeah. And it has to be a reason that is not related to safety because it it has to not be you have to weaken the argument. So I mean, common sense should tell us the argument is wrong because, I mean, it should be pretty clear that three trailer trucks are not safer than one or two trailer trucks. But 
even if common sense explains that, we still have a statistic that is counterintuitive and we still have to explain it. So, yeah. So let, let's, let's see. So yeah, as, as Joyce says, we have to explain for those specific type of trusts. Yes, we do. Okay. So what what are, if you think about it? I mean, what what are some possible reasons? Why this might happen? I mean, what what you can do is you could brainstorm this before you look at the choices. Like, wh why might this be true besides besides safety? If they're susceptible to damage, though, that's 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 not really going to help because they could still kill other people in a crash. Remember that, you know, highway fatalities are both people. Why would a lighter load have anything to do with people dying in a crash, though? Ah, okay, maybe, maybe they travel more slowly. Okay, yeah. I mean, what what you need to do is you need to visualize this in your head. I mean, you, you should imagine, you should visualize these situations in the real world whenever possible. I mean, if you think about a truck with three trailers behind it, guys, where are you going to be able to drive this and what is it going to look like? I mean, are you going to be able to drive that thing anywhere near a major city? Or like anywhere near like highways with lots of traffic on them? I mean, no way, right? Like the only place you're going to be able to drive that thing is on highways that are in the middle of nowhere, giant truck stop. So, yeah. I mean, w one reason it's going to come to mind right away, and two reasons. One is what Veronica is saying. I mean, they, can, they, they can't. If you, if, you, if you imagine a truck with three trailers behind it, you're going to imagine it lumbering along at like a really slow speed, right? Travel much more slowly than other tribes. Also, I mean, I'm sure you know, you can't really drive them in metro areas. You can't go into cities or other congested areas with lots of traffic. I mean, also another reason that came into my mind, at least, was that if you're like a bad driver or like a new driver without a lot of experience, they probably wouldn't let you drive these things. Like, you probably have to be really good to even be allowed to drive a truck with three trailers behind it. I mean, maybe only the best drivers are even allowed to, to drive these things. Like meaning maybe you're not even allowed to drive these unless you have a proven safety record. So, in other words, it's not the trucks that are safe, it's the drivers. It could be that, too. So. This is also another thing that you should do when you review the problems. Is you should see if you can invent other correct answers to the problem. I mean, as you... As part of reviewing strengthening and weakening problems, 
see whether you can invent other correct answers to them. Because usually there's going to be multiple ways in which you could strengthen or weaken an argument. It's, it's, I mean, if, if it's something as obscure as that one about leavened bread, then maybe not. But if it's something like this, where you can actually imagine trucks on a highway in the real world, then you should do this. You should think about the situation and you should see if you can come up with other reasons why these things might be true. So, but in this case, yeah, I mean, here's our standard. The standard that we have is this. We need a reason why that is thing besides actual safety. And these are possible reasons. I mean, you can do this too. You can invent possible answers. Then by all means, as long as you don't waste a ton of time doing that, you should do it. Because it, basically choice A is one of these answers that we came up with. I mean, this is, this is basically choice A. This right here is this. Like they only use them on, in the middle of nowhere on major highways, like where there's no other traffic. Lightly traveled, meaning there's almost no other vehicles on the road. Middle of nowhere. So this, this is the correct answer, meaning these trucks are only being driven on basically roads where no one else is driving. Which, if, if you imagine the situation, that's probably the picture you're going to imagine. I mean, you're, you're not going to imagine a three trailer truck in the middle of San Francisco. Yeah, you're going to imagine it driving through North Dakota on the freeway. For sure. And the other choices, you should also be able to eliminate the other choices, right? Like the Choice B doesn't really, I mean, nobody picked B, doesn't really have anything to do with anything. Choice C doesn't really matter because the absolute rate of fatalities doesn't matter here. The, the point here is that relative to other trucks, these ones have a lower fatality rate. We're not, we're not concerned with absolute rates at all. We're only looking at relative rate. So not absolute rate. So this is not a thing. Make sure that you can eliminate things like C right away too because like you, you should immediately know that you don't care about C because this is not an argument about absolute rates of anything. Like, this is only an argument about why one type of truck has fewer fatalities than other types of trucks. This is not at all an argument about absolute rates of fatality. D, nobody picked it, clearly not relevant. And then E, there's, there's no reason why a lighter load in a truck would have anything to do with fatality. So... We don't, there's, there's no reason to think that this would have any direct relationship. So we have correct answer, irrelevant, 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 irrelevant. And again, when you review the problem, make sure you get to that point too. Black, white, 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 white. The other thing that you have to make sure that you are okay with is the idea that, that none of the wrong answers are anywhere even close to being correct because a lot of people like to kind of hang on to the idea that the wrong answers are close to being correct, and they're not. 
They're, they are nowhere close. And you just got to make sure that you are okay with that idea because in order to improve at this, you, you have to accept that and be okay with it. Um, relative rate means like these have a higher rate than those do. A absolute rate is like high, high or low overall. Yeah. So like if, um, like if my house is taller than your house, then that's relative height. But like absolute height is like how tall is it? Period. You know, like skyscrapers are tall in terms of absolute height. Kind of thing. But yeah, relative just means compared to something else. Absolute means. Absolute means you're thinking of something as high or low, not in comparison. So, yeah. Um, like as another example, if you um, if you make a salary of sixty thousand dollars a year as a high school teacher, that would be a high relative salary. Like you'd be making a lot more money than most high school teachers, but as an absolute salary, that's not that high. Like that's, that's not a huge salary overall compared to like, you know, even call someone rich, that kind of thing. Okay. Um, let's see, oh, why did, why did we go to that? So this, um, the maximum legal payload is less than three times. The, the, the thing is, though, the way they wrote this choice, it's still heavier than the single trailer truck, right? It's not, it, it's not a lighter payload overall. Like, th this choice is just saying that you can't take the single trailer and actually multiply it by three. So, like, for example, if, if a single trailer truck can carry, let's say, 20 tons. This is just saying that a triple trailer truck is not allowed to carry 60 tons. That's all that it's saying. It's not saying that triple trailer trucks are lighter than single trailer trucks. I mean, if that's what it was saying, then sure. But that's not what it's saying. Like, all it's saying is that you're not allowed to multiply by three. Like, maybe you're multiplying by, like, 2.8. But you still have heavier trucks. I mean, these trucks are still heavier and more awkward and everything. So that would still not be a thing. Okay. Um, so that makes sense now. All right. Cool. Let's do one more. Um, no problem. You're welcome. Let's do another one. Should have time, should have time for at least one more. Let's do. Let's do this one. Okay, about. How about this one? Don't forget where the multiple choice answers. Okay, you're not actually making progress, you should pick a choice. Uh, by the way, as far as this other problem goes, 
Um, if you guys like, I can't emphasize this enough. Like, if you ever, if you guys ever interpret anything in a way that completely defies common sense, then that's wrong. Okay. Like, if you, okay, like in this problem, if you read this answer choice and thought that this answer choice meant that three trailer trucks weigh less than one trailer trucks. I mean, guys, that's obviously stupid. That's obviously not true. So that's wrong. That's an incorrect interpretation. That, that's obviously not true. So read the words again and reinterpret them. Really? I mean, like, these, these answer choices never say things that are silly or absurd or stupid or far-fetched or whatever on planet Earth. That's not a thing. So, like, if you just, just make sure that you, I mean, give me a smiley face if you see what I mean. Like, if you, like, this is one of those things that classrooms tend to do to your head. Like, like people taking tests tend to not reject things that they should reject. But if you, I mean, three trailer trucks are obviously going to weigh more than one trailer truck, so they are obviously going to hold more stuff. Because if they didn't, there would be no reason to have a truck with three trailers on it. So just make sure that you, make sure that you reject interpretations that are absurd. Okay, now, um, the question about taking notes, I mean, in general, you shouldn't take notes unless there's a reason why you, why you should. I mean, if, because I mean, in most cases, taking notes is not going to help you because there's only a few lines of text and, you know, there's only a few lines of text. I mean, when you see things in the book about taking notes, remember that the book has to contain stuff that you can put in a book. So there, there's going to be suggestions about taking notes because, you know, you have to write a book that tells people things. I mean, what do you, you know what I mean? Like, if you're going to write a critical reasoning book that talks about processing arguments, then what, what are you going to tell people? I mean, I, I mean, really, it, 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 people, people forget this because critical reasoning, I mean, make sure you guys keep this in mind. Like everything in a book about critical reasoning is always plan B because plan A is to just read the words and think about them like a normal human being. And you can't you can't put plan A in a book because if you did, then you would be inventing artificial intelligence, and that's not a thing that exists yet. So, I mean, like the books that we have are the best that you can get with a book about critical reasoning, but it's still a book about something that you fundamentally cannot write a book about. So you have to keep that in mind. Like with all critical reasoning, like the plan A is to just read the words as though you were having a conversation and just think about it like a person. And then if you get lost or if you have trouble processing the words or if whatever sort of disconnect exists, that's when you use the techniques that are in the book because they can they can be a useful approximation. I mean, what, what's good about this is that the wrong answers are so wrong that the, approxim that the approximate techniques in the books are so useful. Because, I mean, you've seen in those previous problems, like, the wrong answers are always totally wrong. They're always, like, if you have to weaken something, the wrong answers will either be totally irrelevant or will strengthen it. So, because of that, the the plan B or whatever you want to call it is still useful. 
but you have to keep in mind ultimately at the end of the day that trying to write down the process of human critical reasoning is something that cannot be done. And so anything that you can put in a book is still, yeah, I mean, the, the answers to every level of question will be entirely wrong, absolutely all the time. But there will be no such thing as a wrong answer that is close to being correct. It will not happen. So, and when you review the problems, you got to make sure you get to the point where you understand that. And, and where you understand why each of the choices is wrong. So, okay, let's take a look at this. So this time you're filling in a blank, but it's still may actually, so you, you need to provide some sort of evidence for this. So contributed to urban unemployment. So we need to figure out what the policy is. And then, so we need to, we need to clarify two things. We need to know like, what is the policy? And we need evidence that it increases unemployment in cities. Okay. Remember, you need to do this before you read the passage, you guys. Do not read the passage first. Don't do it. I mean, as an illustration of how bad an idea it is to read the passage first, like imagine if you were on a jury and you saw all the evidence first, and then they told you what the case was about. Like, think about how weird that would be. Like, imagine if they showed you, like, 15 bank documents, and they were like, look at these documents. And then they were like, oh, by the way, this person is on trial for fraud. Right? And you'd be like, why am I looking at all these documents? I have no idea what I'm looking for. You would have to be told what the case is first, right? This person's on trial for fraud. Then you show them the evidence. This needs to be the same thing. Like, this is like, okay, here's what the person is on trial for. And then there's like, here's the evidence. Make sure you read these things in an order that makes sense, which is usually not top to bottom. So, okay. All right. So, the policy is this. This is the policy. Policy is to restrict the export of unprocessed cashews. So that they can go to the processing plant. That's the policy. The government Kernland's government doesn't um, do they restrict international sales of raw cashews so that those cashews go to the processing plant in Kernland cities instead. So basically the implication is if this policy were not in place, then these plants would get less business because these cashews would go overseas. Okay, so government defends it, blah, blah, blah. The government says that because the plants are in the cities, it keeps these people employed. That seems 
okay, right? The government says the plants are in the cities. So we're keeping people in the cities employed. You need to show that this might actually increase unemployment in the city. Standard. You need a reason why this might cause more unemployment in the city. If you think about this for a second, I mean, the the unemployment, this this is not going to be unemployed people at the processing plants because the one thing this policy will definitely do is guarantee a flow of, like, th this policy will definitely guarantee a workflow to the processing plants. Like, that will definitely happen. So... If, if this is going to happen, it's going to have to be somebody else in the city who does not work at the processing plant. I mean, give me a smiley face if that makes sense. Your evidence is going to have to point to someone in the city other than the processing plant workers. That's your standard. That's what you want. Okay. Well, let's take a look at the choices. Why might this cause more unemployment in cities? Well, if the farmers don't make profits and they like they drift off of the farmland and they just go into the city, I mean, when they get to the city, they don't have a job. So this would definitely explain it. I mean, farmers who just randomly show up in the city are not going to have jobs. It's not a third. So this is the answer we want. Choice B, some of the byproducts are used by other industries. This, this choice goes the wrong way. Like, I mean, this choice is actually telling us that not only will you employ people in the processing plants, but in fact that you will also create other work for other employers as well. So, I mean, a lot of you guys picked this answer, but this actually goes the exact wrong way. I mean, give me a smile because that makes sense. Like, like this, this, this gives evidence that the policy will create even more jobs beyond the processing plant. even more jobs in the cities. Because not only will it create processing jobs, but in fact, the, the runoff and the waste products will create even more jobs. So this is exactly accurate. I mean, almost half as many of you guys picked B as picked A. So that's, I mean, B, B is relevant. But it's backwards. So maybe you maybe you just forgot which way you were supposed to take this. If that if that happened, then you should like if because that that's that's easy to I mean that, that is much easier to do than you would think, to actually get mixed up and to go the wrong way. Um 
there's two ways to avoid that, which are number one, to just write down on the paper, like I need to go this way. Like I need to argue that there will be more unemployment in the city. Like if you just write that down and look at it, then you won't pick choices like B. Like you, you should you should write this. You should not attempt to keep this in your head. Don't don't do it. No. Don't do it. Write this down. Even if you don't take other notes, you should definitely write this down. The other thing you should also do is imagine that you're actually in a dispute with someone about this. Because if you imagine that you're actually arguing against someone, then you're not gonna you're not gonna accidentally take the other side. Like people don't people don't do that. that, that that's not a thing that happens. So the other choice is people didn't really pick. Um, there's we we don't we don't care about cross other than cashiers, so C is irrelevant, and we don't care about amount of income. We just care about whether people have a job or not. So D doesn't matter. And then we don't care about E because we are only talking about what happens if there is governmental aid. So. Like E is about what happens if they're not governmental aid. We don't care because we're only talking about what if there is. So, but B was the biggest troublemaker here. It's interesting because B is basically white when you want black. It's, it's the exact opposite. But it's easier to get confused like that than you would think. So if you do, if you did, if you did go backwards, just write stuff down next time. Write down, write down more things. Okay. Um, time is up. Uh, recordings are, there's only one web page for Thursdays with Ron. It's all, every, literally everything is on the same page. So if you just go to, uh, the easiest way to find it is honestly to just go to Google and type in Thursdays with Ron and go to the first hit. But if you just scroll down, you'll see the archive. But there, there's no links or anything. Like the, everything is on the same page. So you might have to thank you, Laura. You might have to. Um, you might have to log in before you see the archive. But. Yeah, is this the first one? No, this is like a 200 one. Dude, there's, there's like, we've been doing this for about seven years. So it's definitely not the first one. Uh, maybe, I don't know if that's what you're asking me. But. All right, um, we got to shut, we got to shut this down here in a second, guys. But. Thank you. The next one I think is in, I, I want to say two weeks. Um, I think, I think the next two are on consecutive weeks. I want to say it's, I want to say it's November 10th and 17th, maybe, I, I, whatever those dates would be. Um, just check the calendar, please. I do know the next time is going to be two hours later again. So, and the next few sessions are going to be at the later time again. So, I I don't, uh, as far as SCCRRC, literally no idea what's going to be in what session until like an hour ahead of time. That That's, there's no advanced planning of these things because it's it's basically impromptu. 